you need to take more chances with your paragliding. Hi, I'm Greg, and you're getting safer every day. In the last episode, we talked about paragliding risk and how to practice to improve your chances. In this episode, we're talking about safety margins and how you can push harder and take less risk. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you want these videos to come out faster, get behind the channel on flywithgreg.com. We know from the last video that there's a roughly 2% incident rate in paragliding and hang gliding per year. What can you do to improve these odds? Well, some pilots say nothing. The stats are made up from pilots who are just like you and will try and reduce their risk as much as possible anyway. So whatever you do, you're in those stats. That's a kind of fatalistic approach and it leads some pilots to decide to leave the sport after a sober look at the numbers. That's totally understandable, and it has to do with how much risk you can accept in your life, which has to do with your responsibilities. Not everybody has the same capacity or acceptance of risk. But I'd say we should be a lot more proactive you are in control of almost every element that will lead up to an accident. You can choose the environment that you fly in and you can choose to be safer. We know there's a risk and you definitely don't wanna be the average pilot. You wanna to aim to be exceptional. You're already reducing your risk because we learned in the last videos that you need to practice and you can use preparation and you're watching this video. So we can work on your flying skills together, but until your judgment has developed, you could be taking yourself into situations where your skills don't match the environment and you can be overwhelmed. So that's where you need your safety margin. Kelly Farina has got a great quote. If you keep rolling the dice with paragliding, you'll eventually roll a seven. I love that idea. The thing that catches you out is something that you thought was impossible. You accounted for the six faces of the dice, but it's the seventh face that gets you. That's why you need your safety margin. It's about having a disciplined approach to your flying. Take me for example. I feel I could fly a CCC class glider. So I fly an END. I've never needed my reserve parachute in cross-country flying, but I've got one. I don't think I'm gonna need my helmet, but I'm wearing it. When I go for a glide, I won't take the glide unless there is a landable surface on that glide. It's putting in a bit of space for mistakes. I don't think I'm gonna use those, but they're there, that's my safety margin. The big problem we have in paragliding, safety margins, versus performance goals. As soon as you start competing, even with yourself, you want to go further, go faster, fly higher. You're gonna be tempted to dip into that safety margin because you wanna perform. The lift is often up tight against the terrain. So here's me scratching. In this situation, I've got no margin for a major asymmetric collapse and I've got no space to deploy my reserve and have it open properly. I'm going to throw it for sure, but there's not enough safety margin there. So I'm on high alert when I'm in this space. I'm taking all the measures that I can. I'm as trained as I can be, I regularly practice asymmetric collapses. I know where my reserve handle is. I practice simulate throwing the reserve. I've got my weight shifted slightly away from the slope. 
I'm really looking out all the time, but I'm still taking a risk. Let's be honest. And in this situation, I must work towards reducing the time that I'm exposed to this danger. So I'm looking at ways to escape from this red zone. Competition flying puts even more pressure on your safety margins. You're going to be flying the guys that are doing well. You're racing fast at speed, sometimes close to the terrain because that's where the lift is consistent for a long run. You've got lots of pilots right close to you. Your safety margin is compromised and it's dangerous to fly like this. To build a safety margin, you have to avoid the lure of dangerous performance. Anyone can go further and faster by taking more risk. You want to find piloting solutions to make it safer. What does this mean? Well, going slower and getting higher so that you can glide past the sections where you would have to be scratching and give yourself a better line through your cross-country flight. Maybe it means moving out from the ridge when you've got a lot of traffic and trying to optimize your climbs out at the edge of the lift band or flying away from the traffic and going to use a piece of ridge that isn't quite as good, but it's got fewer pilots on it. So now your skills are being tested. It's gliding out and taking a chance for that climb in the flatlands. All of these times you're taking more risk. It's the risk of failure. It's a risk of sinking out, but you're increasing your safety. And that's the way to work with safety margins is to try and tap into your piloting skills to engineer ways to get that safety margin back and to reduce the time that you are in the danger zone. Find a way to escape. That's your task. There was a very interesting study done in Europe on pilots that had asymmetric collapses that led to a crash. Out of 25 pilots, only two through the reserve parachute. 23 didn't realize that they were in the red zone, that they didn't have enough time. And they either tried to fix the collapse or didn't know what to do. But they didn't know what their safety margin was. They weren't aware that they were inside that red zone. Because the correct response when you have an unfixable cravatted collapse is, go! All right, this response should be hardwired. Recognize what it is. Grab, look, throw the reserve. Check that it opens. Control the glider's pitch. PLF position. And that's 10 seconds. And you can expect 10 meters a second descent rate in this sort of situation. 10 seconds, 10 meters a second, 100 meters. That's my proximity safety margin over the terrain. If I'm below 100 meters, I'm in the red zone all the time. So whether I'm scratching, soaring, flying around, thermaling, top landing, setting up for landing, I'm in that red zone, which means I'm on high alert and I'm looking for ways to minimize the time in that zone by finding ways to escape. Right, enough of me talking, it's time for your task. So I want you to establish your own safety margin, that 100 meters. Next time you go to fly, go to the launch site and check the altitude. And then when you climb, hopefully above launch, I want you to try and guess when you're at 100 meters above the terrain. Then check your altimeter and you can see how close you are and keep doing that until you're very good at judging 100 meters 333 feet over the deck be at the ground landing or on takeoff once you've done that you start building up your awareness of this red zone over the terrain and keep practicing it build it into your flying so when you dip below that height you go into high alert and you're looking for ways to minimize your risk, to increase your separation, 
and to escape from that red zone if possible. Hey, I hope that helps improve your safety margins in your flying. What do you think about safety margins? Have you used yours up before? If you've got any spectacular videos that you'd like to share, let me know. Look out for the next episode where we'll talk about bad landings. Until next time, fly safe.